The race is on to build King Dakar, the tallest, fastest roller coaster on Earth. Its top hat tower and dragster speed will push coaster riders to the next level. With just one year and $25 million, will engineers meet the mega challenge or derail and fail? It's a wild ride, now on Mega Structures. Six Flags Great Adventure Theme Park, Jackson, New Jersey. The front lines of the roller coaster wars. Here, a crack team of engineers hopes to shatter the world record and build the coaster that rules them all. But it will take a mountain of steel and technological wizardry to pull it off. This is about bragging rights. For all its thrills, the sheer awe of an amusement park's signature coaster is what really counts. It is these monuments of pure power and speed that draw the big crowds. If all goes according to plan, they will launch King Dakka in one year. It's a tall order at 45 stories high, accelerating from zero to 128 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. This ride will be the closest you get to blasting off the deck of an aircraft carrier or corkscrewing out of a dive in an F-16. So we've got to bring a crane in. But are the designers behind King Dakka pushing technology to the breaking point? The track record for this new breed of rocket coasters is littered with mechanical problems. Will it be safe? And is it worth the $25 million risk? In the hyper-competitive world of amusement parks, you bet it is. When you tell the public that the tallest roller coaster is in your park, people who aren't interested in roller coasters or parks are going to take notice and they're going to be curious and they're going to want to go to the park to even just look at it even if they don't ride it in the last decade the roller coaster wars have ramped up 200 foot mega coasters have been around for years but in the spring of 2000 cedar point amusement park in ohio threw down the gauntlet breaking through the 300-foot height ceiling with Millennium Force, the first Giga Coaster. For speed freaks, the breakthrough moment came in 1996, when Superman, the escape at Magic Mountain, California, shattered the 100 miles per hour barrier. Up until 10 years ago, all roller coasters operated on a simple propulsion formula. A slow chain or cable lift pulls the train up the first hill, releases it, and gravity takes over. Rocket coasters, such as King Dakka, have rewritten the laws of coaster physics. Forget that slow ride up the first hill. Rocket coasters are shot out of the starting gate, like a fighter jet is catapulted off an aircraft carrier. The shuttle, or catch car, inside the track is locked into place like a coiled spring. The coaster is loaded onto it and cocked like the hammer of a gun. They pull the trigger, and boom! Away you go. Simple? Not really at least not at speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour. And not if you're the chief engineer, but we'll come back to that. In 2003, a new rocket coaster shocks the industry, taking launch technology to another level and shattering two world records. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, Ohio, stands a gut-wrenching 420 feet high making it the first strata coaster. Accelerating to 120 miles an hour in about four seconds, it's the closest thing on wheels to a real top fuel dragster. Enter King Dakka, the monster ride destined to cut top thrill dragster down to size. March 2004, the brain trust from Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey teams with Swiss manufacturer Intamin 
the builders of Top Thrill Dragster, and the concept for King Ka yeah. is unveiled. It looks like it's all here. Great. Their idea, start with the blueprint of Top Thrill Dragster, but make the new coaster bigger, better, and faster. That's King Ka. You know, the amount of power for this ride is substantial. The stakes are higher, much higher, and with untold risks. How far can they push the technology? Can it be done? Can it be built in time? The money people are adamant. To be worth the estimated $25 million investment, it has to be ready for the public to ride at the start of next season. Turning to one of the most sophisticated CAD design software programs around, the idea begins to take form. Every foot further and mile per hour quicker drives up the cost. Every change in the geometry of the track affects the stress on the passenger's body. The formulas for G-forces must be recalculated. The design goes through hundreds of minor variations. We talked about different heights, you know, how high did we want to go. We looked at a possibility of one with two hills on it in the back, and, you know, we decided to stay with uh, the single hill. The final design is a 3,118-foot-long track, packing maximum thrills into the park's allocated space. Its centerpiece will be this soaring 456-foot tower, four-fifths as tall as the Washington Monument, breaking the old record by 36 feet. The designers can even experience the ride from the passenger's point of view. First, the launch at 0 to 128 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. You are shot up the tower faster than you can say, get me off this thing. Coming up to the top, we're going to slow you down real nice for that nice look around. And then next thing you know, you're going to be diving at the ground. It's probably impossible to describe how this would feel to the average person who has never been in a jet fighter or maybe a motorcycle, but even that is no comparison. This will pin you in your seat. It's nothing like you've ever felt before. King Daka goes into production under a veil of secrecy. If one of the other super parks were to find out about their plans and steal their thunder by launching an even taller, faster coaster, King Daka would be a huge waste of cash. In this business, second isn't an option. August 2004, an A-list of engineers converges on the east coast of the U.S., daring to build the dream coaster. As they begin digging the foundation, their deadline is set. April 23rd, 2005. They have less than a year, and the clock is ticking. So far, so good. If they fail, Six Flags will lose truckloads of money. Because of the magnitude of the project, we had to get an earlier start than we typically do for other coasters. One crew works on building the giant tower, while a second crew focuses on the smaller Camel Hump Hill, approximately 150 feet away. They take advantage of the mild fall weather to get as much of the coaster's track laid as possible. By November, the coaster is beginning to take shape. The plan is to work nonstop, seven days a week, even during the winter months. But just when they're making progress, a torrential rainstorm shuts them down. Little do they realize that this is just the beginning. There is much worse yet to come. Mega Structures Ultimate Roller Coaster will return. Now back to Mega Structures Ultimate Roller Coaster. It is now late November, and the brutal storm that shut down construction of the world's tallest, fastest roller coaster shows no signs of abating. The spring deadline for launching King Ka is in serious jeopardy. Every day of rain is like washing thousands of dollars down the drain. One crew is supposed to be working on the mammoth 456-foot tower that stands half done. The other team is trying to finish the 129-foot high Camel Hump Hill.